All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here with you today. And let's go ahead and get started. This is Coach Kevin having our daily morning law of attraction study together. I'm going to hop into my screen, share really quick here. And let's see. Let's go to here. All right. Real quick. Just want to share a couple of things. With you guys, I say you guys, I know we're small in number this morning. Welcome, Valerie. Good to have you with us. And for those who are watching this as a recording, though, I want you to know where you can find everything archived. We have a Facebook group called Daily <clears throat> Law of Attraction Training and Support with Coach Kevin. You can find that at Facebook. Um, hold on a second here. A couple more people wanting to join us in here and here we go let's let people in i think i let everybody in that should be in okay <laughs> had a few more people join us so welcome 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 talking about our facebook group daily law of attraction training and support with coach kevin at facebook.com forward slash daily law of attraction or facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Daily Law of Attraction Training. That's where you can find us, and that's where you can find the archives, show you here, of the different days of what we're studying so that you can follow along with us. And also a place where you can pop in and communicate outside of the 30 minutes that we're together each day. Okay, the other thing I want to go ahead and do is hop right in to the work that we're on right now. And we are currently in the process of studying a book called The Jackrabbit Factor. And The Jackrabbit Factor was actually written by somebody who's become a good friend of mine. Her name is Leslie Householder. Um, the way you can find this book, of course, you can go buy a paperback copy if you like off of Amazon or whatnot. But if you'd like a free copy, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and go to Google and type in Jackrabbit Factor PDF. That's what I did uh, to get a, a free copy. I have the paperback and everything, and I have it on Kindle, but I wanted to show you where to get a free copy so that you can follow along with us. And if you type that in, I think the very first thing that'll pop up, you can get a free copy. So we are currently on a chapter called The Sacrifice. We're on page 56 of 86 pages in this book. And this book is different than most of the things that you will have read and studied related to the law of attraction. The number one biggest difference about it, it's written in story format as an allegory. So it is based upon real, well, based upon <laughs> real life as much as it can be, but it, it's written in a story form and you get to meet different characters throughout the book and even their names within the book have significance and symbolism to what's being taught. So anyhow, I'm gonna hop on in and get moving with this. The sacrifice. Richard stood there and his jaw hung open. What did I do wrong? His mind spun and he felt stupid for being so presumptuous and unknowingly revealing his ignorance. He could not let Mr. Mollop get too far away. Quick, think, Richard, think. How can I get him to talk to me? Just then, the rabbit twitched in his hand. He looked down, and his eye widened. Oh, no, he wouldn't expect me to. There's no way. Richard looked up at the man who was getting farther every moment. At the same time, the man turned his head, and continuing to stroll along, he met Richard's gaze. The look in his eyes said, come on, haven't you figured it out by now? Richard could scarcely believe what he was about to do. He closed his eyes once more, bracing himself for the painful decision he was about to make. Taking a deep breath, he held up the rabbit briefly and then began to trot ahead to catch up with Mr. Mollop. Charitably, the man stopped and waited for him. As Richard approached, he was shaking his head repeatedly, venting his disbelief that he was actually going to give away 
the biggest bounty he had ever achieved for nothing but knowledge. Closing his eyes again, he held out the rabbit for the man to take and winced with anticipation for the torturous exchange. You sure you want to do this, Mr. Malap asked? Take it already. Take it. Richard I, Richard's eyes remained closed. Mr. Mollop carefully opened up his last two fingers on his left hand, which already held two other rabbits, and closed them again around the rabbit's ears. Richard finally opened his eyes and looked longingly at the rabbit. He felt queasy in the pit of his stomach, but pressed his lips together firmly, inhaled, drew his nose, and said, Okay. Nodding, the man complimented Richard. That took some guts, my friend. I applaud your foresight. You'll be very glad you did that. And with that kind of courage, you will very quickly recoup your investment. Plus, you'll have the knowledge you seek. I know I will. Will I fully expect to. Richard straightened up as he felt a growing confidence in his decision. How quickly do you expect to get your rabbit back? My rabbit. Mr. Mollop didn't say anything. He simply waited for Richard to respond. Richard sensed he was being tested again, and he tried to interpret Mr. Mollop's body language and verbal cues. He was gun shy for having made a fool of himself only a few minutes before, but he had nothing more to lose except his pride, and he was realizing that the last wound to his pride hadn't been exactly fatal. The good man raised his eyebrows and Richard, throwing up his hands, let out all the stops. I expect to get my rabbit back before we're done talking today. Immediately, he raised his cheeks and eyebrows squinting. There was a twinkle in Mr. Mollop's eye and Richard felt a wave of relief. Perhaps he had said the right thing this time. What did you, what do you want more? Let's see. What do you do when you want a raise at work, Richard? I never got a raise at work. Why is that? They just didn't give them out, except for the annual cost of living increase. How do you know they didn't give any out? I don't know. I guess because I never got one. Did you ever go into your boss's office and come right out and ask for one? No. What about your bank account? Have you ever asked your bank to reverse a service charge or overdraft fee? No, I haven't. I didn't know you could. Mr. Mollop stared Richard down and waited for the lights to go on in his head. Finally, they did. Richard's eyes grew large and the man smiled. Richard held his gaze and turned his head slightly, communicating the question, you mean... The man responded with raised eyebrows <clears throat> as if he expected Richard to make the next move. Finally, Richard spoke. Will you give me my rabbit back? Mr. Mollop relaxed and it was suddenly clear that he had been waiting for Richard to finally get it this whole time. Handing the rabbit back to Richard, he said, you'll get what you asked for out of life, Richard. Have the courage to ask. Have the guts to go after what you want. The worst that can happen is you'll hear no. The best that can happen is you'll get what you want. Richard never was never as full of gratitude for that rabbit as he was then. He stroked it affectionately, and then looking back at Mr. Mollop, he asked, are you still going to teach me? The man didn't respond. Richard pursed his lips together, and then, as if a light went on in his head, he articulated, Mr. Mollop, will you please teach me? Yes, I will, but please call me Randy. Randy smiled and motioned for Richard to sit down on the grassy mound nearby. It seemed so long ago, but Richard had not forgotten. You said you would explain to me why, initially, you were not going to engage in a conversation with me, even though I visualized it and felt it. Randy Mollop grinned and nodded. Leaning closer, he gazed intently into Richard's eyes. Tell me this, why did you wanna have that conversation so badly? Because I knew it would help me get a ton of rabbits. 
then why didn't you just go ahead and visualize a handful of rabbits instead of visualizing the two of us having a conversation? Okay, guys, <laughs> pay attention, pay attention. This is some commentary from me. This is a huge lesson right here. Then why didn't you just go ahead and visualize a handful of rabbits? That's the end result he wanted. Why didn't you just go ahead and visualize the end result as if it has already happened and you are currently living it instead of visualizing the two of us having a conversation? You see, he did not know where the rabbits were going to come from. Rabbits come from God. They come from the universe. The conversation was just guidance and direction of God putting us in the right place at the right time. Okay, with the right people. But what gets us to the right place at the right time with the right people, the right resources, the right ideas, the right help, is us visualizing our handful of rabbits, not visualizing the how-to, which is exactly what Richard Goodman was doing. But round him all up, and you probably get by his name now, round them all up, right? Just taught him a huge lesson. What difference would that have made? Two things. Number one, you have no right to manipulate my own free agency by the thoughts you choose. Never try to visualize people doing things for you. You visualize the outcome. And the right people will do the right things to help it happen. But you do not know who the right people are, so you cannot decide that part. That isn't your place. Number two, if you had visualized the ultimate reason for wanting my knowledge, then you would have instinctively known that your next move, what your next move should be. In this case, your move would have been to provide me with compensation, no matter what the cost. Let me repeat this. Number two, if you had visualized the ultimate reason for wanting my knowledge, then you would have instinctively known that your next move should yeah, what your next move should be. In this case, your mo move would have been to provide me with compensation, no matter what the cost. Richard bit his lip and nodded as the realization of his mistake sunk in. Okay, I see what you mean. Let's move on. You wanted to know how to catch multiple rabbits, right? That's right. That's why I'm here. Well, let's go back to the time when you spotted your first rabbit. Now, you said that you saw it sort of vague in your mind. And then it was farther away and hard to see when it approached or when it appeared. Yes, that's right. And it ran away from you before I could do any, and it ran away before I could do anything about it. And what about the first one you caught? It's my guess that you saw it pretty vividly in your mind, but it still wasn't easy to catch. Yeah, you're right. I saw it very vividly, and when it appeared, it was right there in front of me, just as I had pictured it. But I had to chase it, and it almost got away from me. Well, if you want a rabbit to come to you, then you've got to take the time to visualize the rabbit already in your hands. Okay, huge lesson here again. Huge, huge, huge lesson. Well, if you want the rabbit to come to you, then you've got to take the time to visualize the rabbit already in your hands. Then you don't have to chase the sucker <laughs> and, and you know wear yourself out trying to get what it is that you want. And you have to feel the fur in your mind and sense its warmth as you hold it in your fingers. Make it vivid. And even better still, you visualize a look in its eyes that it is entirely pleased to serve you and be with you because you treat it with respect. But aren't you going to end up eating it? Not necessarily. We actually care for it and let it breed. So we will have an unlimited supply. Some will be eaten, but even those are happy to serve because they're God's creation, created to provide the needs of other creatures. So that's why my first rabbit was tough, 
because I had in mind an expectation that it didn't want to be with me, that is that it would be hard to get. And so it was. You got it. So if I want a rabbit, do I imagine one coming to me and then picture myself grasping it? Is that how I make it happen? No, you aren't going to make anything happen. Too many people mess it all up with that mentality. Instead, imagine it already with you. See, don't be like the people who spoil, spend all kinds of wasted time visualizing circumstances moving toward their favor, trying to make things happen. Instead, experience the feelings of success as though it has already been accomplished. Allowing yourself to experience it sort of puts you in a state of being that is in harmony, so to speak, with the thing you want. Then the right people and things will naturally be attracted to you and do what needs to be done because it gets them what they want as well. The fact of the matter is that using our minds, trying to force things or other people to do stuff is in violation a basic universal law, like I tried to do with you, right? Randy was pleased to see Richard absorbing the ideas so well. What about two guys I saw who were after one rabbit? What were they doing wrong? They both believed they could find one, but only one rabbit showed up. I've seen it all before. This is how it usually goes. The men successfully imagined a rabbit and they undoubtedly were excited about it. But when the one appeared, <clears throat> all application of proper thought went out the window. The competition ensued, and the one who finally caught it probably attributed it to his wit and never discovered true rabbit wealth. <clears throat> so as long as he thought he had done it by his own clever strategy, he never found the power of working with God to provide all of his needs. On top of that, he probably lost his friend over the illusion that there was only so much to go around. And that one must be faster, quicker, and smarter than the next guy to win the prize. That would pretty much sum it up. Richard shook his head and chuckled as he thought, is there anything this man doesn't know? <laughs> Gathering his thoughts together, Richard asked, so, does this mean that we don't have to compete with anyone else to get what we want out of life? That's the reality. There is more than enough for everybody, and to compete like that is actually in violation of another one of the laws of thought. That's the beautiful thing about it, Richard. God has provided enough for everyone who obeys these natural laws. If everyone believed and could visualize and truly expect to receive whatever they are asking of God, then everyone would receive. The laws of nature do not play favorites. I saw a couple of men competing for sacks on the path. Unnecessary. So long as they think there isn't enough to go around, they entertain a lie that prevents them from ever seeing what they're searching for. I was surprised to see the other men competing for a rabbit. I thought that to leave the path meant you were somehow on a higher plane or something like that, and that you wouldn't operate that way. Random Olive shook his head. Oh no, there are marvelously honorable men who never choose to leave the path, which is entirely their prerogative. And then there are the blockheads who leave the path and do it all wrong. You'll find all kinds of people in both arenas. No. You don't have to leave the path to be happy, but isn't it nice to know you have options? <clears throat> yeah, it really is. Isn't that what freedom is all about? <clears throat> Having choices? Having choices. Unfortunately, sometimes we learn too late that the choices we make have limited our ability to keep making choices. Eventually, our poor choices lead to smothering bondage. That's how I felt right before I went on my very first rabbit hunt. <clears throat> what did you do? What was your first step away from the sack race? I imagined how it would feel to be free of it. 
Then I decided to find a way somehow. Then I changed how I felt about the sacks. Instead of grumbling about them, I started to appreciate them. Gratitude is a powerful thing. I think it put me in the right frame of mind to be able to see things I had never seen before. I started to see bigger and better sacks, and eventually I started seeing rabbits. When I was able to feel like they were already with me, the real magic began. Oh, wow. Randy's words distilled upon Richard's mind, and he mused out loud, I think I finally understand the gratitude part. I can go ahead and feel grateful that a rabbit is mine, because in my own mind, it is. Randy was grinning and nodding. You got it. So, you think you're ready to get your next rabbit? Richard panicked. Was Randy wearing or weaning him already? With his mind still in a spin, he suddenly had a hard time believing that any wild jackrabbit would actually be interested in going home with him. Just because he felt grateful, it was already his. I'm not sure. What if a jackrabbit doesn't want to go home with me? Look, I'm going to tell you something profound, and I want you to remember this, and trust me, that which you want is looking for you. Randy stated, and then emphasized again very slowly, that which you want is looking for you. I'm going to repeat that. That which you want is looking for you. In other words, you don't have to struggle to obtain it. Change your mental picture and expect that you will naturally attract all that you need. In other words, Richard thought he was grasping it, but he wanted as much clarification as he could get. He didn't want this new way to become obscure. He wanted to own this information. He wanted to understand it well enough that it actually became part of him. Well, changing your thinking literally changes you. You have been like a lantern with no flame, trying to, oh, I don't know. Randy grasped for a meaningful analogy. Finally, he continued excitedly, trying to gather an insect collection. Turn on your light and they just come. Each person on the path is like a lantern that has burned out. It is a dream that can turn their light on, and then the bugs, or whatever they need to fulfill their dream, will be drawn to them in a very natural way. Quite often, it isn't circumstances that need to change. It is the person that must change. Change, Richard thought to himself, haven't I already changed? How much more do I have to change? Changing oneself sounded harder than just chasing a rabbit. He thought back to Felicity's hurtful words. Why can't you be more like your brother? That cutting remark, on top of everything else, had moved him out of their door and into the forest. Couldn't he succeed just the way he was? Hadn't he already changed significantly? He had caught a rabbit. Didn't that count for something? It must have been the fallen look on Richard's face that led the good man to encouragingly clap his hand briefly on Richard's bicep. Hey, it's not as hard as it might sound. Don't you see, when you follow the feelings I'm talking about to grow within you, that in itself is facilitating the necessary change. That's it. Richard felt encouraged, so he didn't interrupt his teacher. I'm gonna repeat that. Hey, it's not as hard as it might sound, don't you see? When you allow, I said follow, when you allow the feelings I'm talking about to grow within you, that in itself is facilitating the necessary change. That's it. Again, when you allow the feelings I'm talking about to grow within you, that in itself is facilitating the necessary change. That's it. Richard felt encouraged, so he didn't interrupt his teacher. Let's test it. How would you like to try it with something small before going off to capture your next rabbit? Yeah, let's do that. If I could see this work in a small way, then I know it would help my confidence with the big dreams. Randy spotted a monarch butterfly flitting about, not very far from them. Richard watched him close his eyes for a moment, 
and smile. He opened his eyes and stood up slowly, then approached the patch of blossoming clover where 10 to 15 more butterflies danced. But before getting too close to them, he sat down again and held out his finger near a cluster of dainty white clover blossoms. In a minute or two, he slowly lifted his arm to show a butterfly comfortably perched on his finger. Richard was amazed. Randy made it look so easy. Standing and then approaching the man, Richard said, I don't think I could do that. Then you can't, Richard. <laughs> Pay attention to your thoughts. You have to allow yourself to believe in the impossible. Richard raised one eyebrow and bit his lip. I have an idea. How do you feel about ants? Ants. Now there's one thing I can believe <laughs> will come to me. I'm a magnet to the little buggers. They love to bite me, and I happen to be allergic. Perfect. Let's go find some ants. But that's not requiring that I believe in the impossible. That is asking that I simply believe in the inevitable. Oh, no, Richard. This is all about getting whatever it is you want. Do you know what you want? I don't want to get bit. Then let's go find a massive colony of ants. <laughs> all right, this is getting exciting. What's going to happen when we talk tomorrow? I am going to um, stop sharing this for a quick moment, but I'm going to go back into screen share and share something else with you really quick. Here we go. So I have a class that I teach on Tuesday nights. I know some of you participate in that class. It's a class that people have paid for. And the last, uh, quite a few people went through it over a period of 18 weeks. And some of them have done very well. And all those people know basically about me being a one-on-one -on -one coach. Not that I've one-on-one -on -one coached them all, but I do a few of them now. And they know that the normal cost for me to do that is $10,000. That's for six months for an hour a week. And here's the track record, guys. There hasn't been anybody who has spent that money who hired me as a coach who hasn't within somewhere between six to 12 months of working with me that hasn't multiplied their income by at least $100,000 for a year. So for a $10,000 one-on-one -on -one coaching, every single person who's paid that has actually increased their income by at least $100,000. So what do I mean by that? Did they receive the whole 100,000 in the six to 12 months? Uh, some of them, yeah, <laughs> totally. Some of them did it within the first four months. Um, some of it, it's been a little bit longer, but always within a year, they've either received $100,000 or their, inc their income has gone up by at least $10,000 a month. So it's an inevitable for them to keep receiving money and receive more than $100,000. However, there's a lot of people that come on to the class or come on to something like this, and they either can't see themselves doing it or haven't believed it or whatever, whatever the resources are. So... I've been doing some testing lately to see how effective I can be working with people for less time and doing things a little bit differently. I found that if I get laser focused with someone and they get laser focused with me, we don't need anywhere near an hour's worth of time on a weekly basis for them to actually start getting what they want. So what I've put together, because I've done group coaching, Group coaching has been anywhere from $1,250 to $2,500 typically, uh, usually for about the same six-month period, but obviously not in a one-on-one -on -one setting. However, not in a one-on-one -on -one setting, however, still having you know access to me on a weekly basis, it's just everybody else gets to listen in. It's not quite as personal. And even the people that have done that type of coaching, let's say $1,250, the last person that paid for that ended up with, in the same period of time, nearly $20,000 added income to their life. So we can see that results are happening, okay? But the results are, yes, part of me working with you, but the other part of the results are you following through and doing the work. 
And I found that when I coach people, especially in a one-on-one situation, they will follow through. (laughs) And if you actually do the work and follow through, you will get results. So what I've decided to do, because I've tested this a little bit, and I want to put it out there, some of you guys have not had the funds to do the one-on-one coaching or even the group coaching. Here is one opportunity that is probably perfect for you. And I shared this with people last night and I already have somebody that said that they're interested. They're going to get back with me today. And it is $997. But what you get with that is you're going to get eight. That's eight one-on-one coaching sessions with me for a half hour. Now those sessions don't have to start like next week. I'm okay if you start a few weeks later or a month or two later, especially those that were in my class that maybe want to get a little more study in, the, in what we're doing in our, in our uh, class on Tuesday nights before they start the one-on-one coaching. But what I don't want to do is have somebody pay for it and then start it six months from now. Okay, So somewhere within one to two months or right away, depending on what you want to do, basically you can bank those. But once we get started, we don't spread them out. We don't make it eight months, one week, okay? It is going to be eight weeks apart because we need to create momentum for you. So here's my offer. It's the first five people that pay for it. And I promise you after this, I will not offer it again like this. It's the least amount of money that I'm willing to receive that I believe will be valuable enough to the person who pays it to have both of us come out winning in this situation, okay? I found that the people that pay the most money for coaching always end up with the most. However, what also has happened is every single person who's paid the $10,000 for coaching when our six months was over, every single one of them asked me to continue coaching them and have continued to pay for it. So the end, they were able to pay for it from results. But what I'm hoping to do is help you get some results so that you can continue on and continue to grow and prosper. I can't promise you you will make a dime, okay? Because I'm not the one taking your action. I'm not the one doing your thinking for you. I'm the one who's guiding and directing you. But here's what I would say, based upon everybody that I've worked with so far, it would be nearly, if you do what I say, okay, it would be nearly impossible for you not to multiply that 997, call it a thousand bucks multiple times over okay even if it turned into three thousand or four thousand or five thousand dollars more than you paid in within a couple of months that would more than be worth it and again that will show you that it all works so it gives you a chance to try out one-on-one coaching and my goal is to get laser focus with you got some tools to do that and help you get what it is that you want now if you're saying well i want to make a million dollars in two months I'm not saying it can't happen, okay? I, it's gonna depend on where you're at, how far we're gonna get with that, okay? But I do know this, we can get you further along than you've ever been so far in your life. So you've got my email there, coachkevinsparks at gmail.com. Coachkevinsparks at gmail.com. If you'd like to be one of the first five people, because that's all who get to do this, five people, the first five people to pay the 997 will get the eight one-on-one coaching sessions with me. So hopefully that is appealing to you. Hopefully that's helpful to you. And hopefully you will choose to do that with me. Um, anyhow, that's enough of that promoting. Go ahead and stop that. And if you guys, those that are here right now, any uh, questions, comments on what we've done today? Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hey, Joseph. You showed up a little later. Or did you drop out and come back? So yeah, my computer went down actually because I've been I've been um, I, I noticed that um, this laptop uh, just uh, for some reason the the, the Zoom uh, Zoom crashed. So okay. luckily I was able to quickly come back. Um, sometimes I have to restart the computer. It's an older laptop, but it's still working great. Gotcha. Gotcha. So everything is uh, going well. It sounds great. It's interesting how the book is, uh, you know, going going forward. And uh, uh, we appreciate you reading it. It's definitely um, um, a 
my list to, uh, to get this book and get to reading it. And I like the energy that you put behind it, and uh, we appreciate the direction. <laughs> well, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you here with us in the morning. It's nice to see you almost every morning. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I try. Um, I try to make it. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So how many, how many more, uh, how long is the book overall? Because I tell my list to get to it, but um, haven't uh, been able um, to grab the book well, yet. Let's, let's see, we kind of peek at it here really quick. It was, where are we? We're on page 60 of 86. So oh, it's an 86 pages book. So that's yeah, not, not a long book at all. Um, so we'll be finishing up in, I don't know, two, three days, maybe four yeah. days. You can, you can sense that it, it addresses that very deeply lying psychology, which really is a property of the unconscious. Um, yep. Yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. It, it's, it's memorable. And so the, the cool thing, when you do get to sit down and kind of read it through, um, and again, you, you'll find it for free. You just Google it. <laughs> it's right there or go buy it, you know, if you want the paperback copy or Kindle. But, you know, it's easy to get for free. Just Google Jackrabbit Factor PDF. It, when you do that, the first thing that pops up is uh, Leslie's website. And as soon as you click it, it, it opens right up to the PDF. That's what I found. So, cool. Hey, Valerie, how are you doing? You there? No, <laughs> so you're logged in. Valerie's still muted that she yeah. may have just stepped away from the computer for a second. Yes. I did not see it. Sorry, Kevin. I can't. I'm having a little tough tech di difficulty this morning. That's can right. you hear me? I can. I can hear you fine. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Any uh, questions or comments? Um, no, not at all. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty, All right. we'll catch you too, Luce, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a really great day. Bye.